Tran Bui. Don't put the brakes on your travel plans just because you have children. As I have learned, it can be a wonderful adventure to travel with your tots. Today we are in St. Louis, Missouri. This 630-foot stainless steel arch reflects St. Louis's role as the gateway to the West. Since 1965, when the last section was put into place, the iconic Gateway Arch has played backdrop to photo ops of all sorts. And for over 30 years, tram cars have carried over 25 million passengers up top to get a bird's eye view of the beauty of St. Louis. Home to the St. Louis Cardinals, if your timing is right, you may even catch them at home in Bush Stadium. St. Louis offers a rich musical history from jazz and blues to rock and hip hop. Downtown nightlife is always rocking with local and national bands for every taste. And you can taste the flavor of St. Louis at events like the Rib America Festival or check out the colorful sights at the Great Forest Park Balloon Race. With a variety of unique museums, there is something here for everyone. Parents looking to teach their children about history and culture will find a variety of options for learning experiences. And kids will love the interactive and hands-on exhibits that make St. Louis a kid-friendly place to visit. The St. Louis Museum is known as the Magic House. And as soon as you arrive, it's easy to see why. This is not a traditional museum, but a house. And for children of all ages, this place is definitely full of magic. With so much to do, my son Jackson, daughter Ava, nephew Riley, and niece Leah start at the Children's Village. Museum President Beth Fitzgerald explains why this area is a favorite for both parents and kids. So we're very uh, aware of the fact that children learn many times through role playing, through taking on the roles of, of people in the community. I think parents do enjoy seeing their children take on the role of adults. I think it's always amazing to me too that you can see the smallest child walk into the pizza parlor and know exactly how to serve pizza, go up to their parents, take their orders. This is for you. Ooh. But now it's time to take on a more serious role. I'm a doctor. We wanted to include the healthcare professions in the children's village, but I have to say it has been just so cute to see how engaged the little boys are taking care of the babies. With hands-on learning a top priority here, there was so much to see and hear. We spent time in the bubble room trying to blow the perfect bubble, listen to music as we spun the wheel, watch the amazing colors through the kaleidoscope, tried our hand at some magic and followed scarves and balls flying through tubes guessing where they would come out. One area of the Magic House is reserved especially for the little ones. And since both exits are guarded, it gives your tots a little more freedom to run around. So a little bit of magic um, is for children ages 1 through 6. It's still one of our, our most popular areas of the museum. It has places to crawl. Can, can we come here every day, Mommy? And play in the water. And spring you. you come, or you see yourself okay. over and over. Let's get out! Here. This is a longtime favorite and a must-do activity. It's the electrostatic generator. <laughs> the what? You slap it and keep your hand on it and shake your head. It's a hair-raising experience. My niece Leah really got a charge out of it. And check this out, the Jack and the Beanstalk exhibit. Your little ones can climb three levels of the museum on this beanstalk. And parents, you can watch from the stairs or head right in and try to climb with them. There's even a way to sneak out the middle. We did it! Yay! <laughs> or you can head all the way to the top. I'm the king of the beanstalk! Okay, I want to get down. Once atop the beanstalk, our kids quickly realized there was a mystery to be solved. They headed over, got their list of clues to see if they could figure out who committed the crime. They looked for clues, marked the evidence, and checked out the suspects. There's even a hidden passageway behind the bookcase. Your child can see if he's up to the task of cracking the code, then lead through the secret exit. I know who did it! Once the mystery is solved, more role-playing fun can be found in the Star Spangled Center. This is President Jackson speaking. <laughs>
and the courtroom. Hello. Whatever role your child wants to try, chances are they can try it at the Magic House, a St. Louis favorite for parents and kids of all ages. All that playtime can really work up an appetite. St. Louis not only has lots of attractions for families, but also plenty of kid-friendly restaurants. The city was originally settled by the French, then populated by Italians and Germans. So there is something for every craving. We got a front row seat to one of the most popular places in town. At Dewey's Pizza, you won't just find gourmet pizzas, a friendly staff, and a casual environment. <laughs> there is also an impressive demonstration that has kids and adults glued to the kitchen window. The hard part for us was deciding which pizza we wanted. There is a huge selection. No wonder Dewey's is considered the talk of the town. Yummy. Families are also talking about Ragazzi's restaurant, and it's not just because of this sign or this photo op. It's all about the years of fantastic food and great service. Yeah, this is the oldest restaurant on the hill. Hill's a historic uh, Italian uh, neighborhood. It was founded by Italian immigrants back in the early 1900s. Um, Ragazzi's, uh, 1957, um, Ragazzi's became Ragazzi's. It's been a family restaurant from the very beginning. It's the family who owns it, same family the whole time. So, you know, we've always, always uh, embraced, you know, kids, family coming in, because that's, you know, that's Italian, uh, quite Italian culture, you know. We enjoyed the family-style meal. Everything from the famous toasted ravioli to veal parmesan, pasta, pizza, fried chicken, and much more. Our crew walked away with full stomachs in our photo on the Ragazzi's online wall of fame. Hi, my name is Michelle West, and my mom travel tip is, I like to have a bag ready in case my kids get sick along the way. I have a towel, a change of clothes, wipes, and bag at the ready. I also like to carry a variety of things. I have a first aid kit, allergy medication, pain reliever, and something for an upset stomach. Still ahead on Traveling with Tots, climb and slide through a 66-foot bowhead whale or explore the mystery in the enchanted caves. Then head atop the roof where you can ride a 1940s Ferris wheel while getting a 360-degree view of St. Louis. Plus, the first step to your child becoming the next Einstein is falling in love with science. We have found a place where learning meets excitement. And later, your little engineers will go for the place with all the choo-choo. Hi, I'm Tran Bowie. Don't put the brakes on your travel plans just because you have children. As I have pleasantly learned, traveling with tots is a wonderful adventure, even if you're in the great outdoors. Camping can conjure up all kinds of images. Camping with the kids doesn't have to be a nightmare. In fact, it is a great way to bond and make memories with your family. The trip doesn't have to be expensive, elaborate, or stressful. Start by searching for the nearest park or campsite. Hard work. My family and I picked Meeman Shelby right. Forest State Park Oops. in Millington, Tennessee. Then decide if you want the comforts of home or something more rustic. Many parks have cabins that you can rent. Most have plenty of room for your family. Living room, bedrooms, kitchens, and baths. This one also has a great view. If you prefer something more mobile, cruise around in a camper or an RV like this one. It's like having a home on wheels. Inside, there's just enough room for a sitting area, bed, mini kitchen, and bathroom. And here's my sleeping bag. But if you want to rough it, pitch a tent. Oh, thank you. That's exactly what we decided to do with our friends at Emma Hills in the Sandies. We found a great spot surrounded by trees. There's also a fire pit and a picnic table. Plus, it's close to the restrooms. Tent, check. Flashlight, check. First aid kit, got it. Did I forget something? Packing for a camping trip can be a bit overwhelming, so here is a checklist to help you get started. 
Morgan, Claire, can you carry that? Take that over there for me, please, honey, to the I'll picnic table. This. Every time we have to pack for a camping trip, I mean, I have to pack for my three kids, my husband, for myself. That's not big enough. You need to carry the tent. How about you carry the tent? Oh, for yeah, oh, baby. Right. And I'm always worried that I'm going to forget something. To help Janice and Mihail with her packing problem. Well, you don't want to bring the couch unless you've got a Swiss Army couch. Is camping pro Harold Taylor. He says what you need depends on what kind of trip you're planning. Here's some things you want to bring no matter what kind of camping you're doing. You need some way to start a fire, so you need some matches. You need a compass and a whistle and just to keep you from getting lost. And if you do get kind of disoriented, you know how to find your way back. You will also need a flashlight, bug repellent, sunscreen, and a first aid kit. And whatever you do, bring lots of extra socks, dry, clean socks. And then when we get there, we have to put this tent together. You know, all of that just can seem so overwhelming. Yeah, I understand those concerns. When you first open the tent bag, it, it, it's kind of intimidating. Lots of pieces and parts. But nowadays, with these new modern tents, they make it so easy that my kids put them together all the time. We're going to put that theory to the test in just a moment. But first... Well, you know, it's real important that you consider where you're putting your tent when you're putting it together. You want to make sure that you're not too close to the edge of a hill or a cliff, not too close to the water, of course. And um, I like to make sure there's no branches overhead, dead branches that might fall if the wind picks up, no rocks, no poison plants or animals nearby. Um, when I'm putting my tent together, I like to put it so that my head is facing uphill. Right, now, right. let's see if Janice and her crew can do it. Are you guys ready to put up our house? Nice job. <laughs> We've shown you what you should bring on a camping trip. Here's what you shouldn't take with you. Can you carry that? Mm -hmm. Very good. There's a lot of things that you just don't really need when you're camping. So don't overdo it. Don't pack something you don't want to have to carry and don't pack up something that'll be just un unpleasant or hard to keep up with. Thank you. And we're always bound to forget something. But you know, we really don't need much. I mean, we have one another. We're out in the natural element. I mean, what could be better? All right, guys, it's craft time. Let's Heading outdoors is great fun, fun and will re-energize your family. We'll show you how to make some memorable moments and even a keepsake to last forever. Plus, we'll show you how to cook outdoors and bring everything you need, including the kitchen sink. And later, see why everyone likes to gather around the campfire. Hi, I'm Shally Atkinson, and I like to pack a picnic on the go. And when I do that, I stop off at a park or a rest stop to let the kids run around. But I also don't forget to pack my antibacterial gel and the wipes just to keep those germs away. This is Traveling with Tots Destination Nashville. We have taken a trip into outer space at the Adventure Science Center, picked up a paintbrush and created art at the Art Quest plus strolled in one of the many beautiful parks Nashville has to offer. If you have a family of adrenaline junkies, jump at the chance to go to Adventure World! <gasps> it's a great place for high-flying fun! <laughs> we decided to try zip lining with an array of tots and teens in tow, from 15 years old down to our five-year-old daredevils. Bo, our guide, went through the safety tips as our little ones listened intently, wide-eyed and ready for this adventure. First up, helmets. If you just want to come over and grab a helmet, if you guys want to come over this way, I'm going to help you with your helmets. Once the helmets were secured, it was time to slip right into the safety harness. Okay, maybe we need a minute or two on this step. Then a few more safety instructions to learn before we can zip. All of our guides, we hire them for a reason because they've got great personalities. They're very calm with, uh, with our public. Uh, they really do know how to talk to the public well. Let's get zipping. First, the big kids get to go. Right. 
Then the little ones get a push and off they go. For those who uh, are a little more hesitant to jump into the adventure, um, we've, we've sequenced all our zip lines, starting with the smallest ones first, low impact, low intensity, trying to break people in slowly. We call it the bunny hill. So everyone starts off on the, little, the short little bunny hill slope first, and then they progressively get higher, longer, and faster. So you get acclimated to it. All right, easy enough. At first, you know, he said you got to run and go down. At first, you know, you think that you're going to mess up and you're going to fall but it's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is just walk and jump. So everyone did pretty well at the bunny slope, but now it's time to kick it up a notch and try one that's higher and longer. And even Tyler is still smiling. At first you feel a little nervous and then after you go through it a couple times, you kind of get used to it and you feel the enjoyment and you get all happy and you see how amazing it is to go on it. So we ran or were pushed. We zipped alone. We zipped together. We zipped ever so gracefully and really stuck the landings. There were some five and six year olds and they weren't even scared to do it. So you can tell that they pre pretty much enjoyed it. We made some great memories. My favorite part was the top one where we just jumped off and just going across it and feeling like you're flying. Memories. I want to create that memory that you look back 20 years from now in a photo album and say, Mom, Dad, this was a memory that I cherished from my childhood that makes a difference for me. It kind of makes you think, you know, this is something that a whole family can do and this is something that everyone can do together and enjoy it. This is definitely an off the beaten path adventure for your family, but well worth the drive. We are tucked away in the middle of nowhere for a specific reason to really make sure that people understand that this is nature. You get to come out, you get to play, enjoy, uh, enjoy just being outside. Even our two little ones who stood the entire day on the sideline decided to give zipping a try on the bunny hill before we left. I would totally do this again anywhere, any place. This has been really fun. We would love to hear from you. Check out our website at travelingwithtots.info or find us on Facebook at Traveling with Tots by Grumpy Pants Productions. We hope you enjoyed our visit to Nashville, Tennessee. This is the place where country music rules, but it's also filled with attractions, restaurants, and parks that were designed with kids in mind. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Traveling with Tots. Promotional consideration paid for by Embassy Suites Hotel, Nashville at Vanderbilt. Call or go online to make your family reservation.